Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. And thank you very much for taking the time today to listen in. As Jen mentioned, uh, my name is Anand Misra, and I'm in product marketing with NetSuite, and I'll be moderating today's session. Uh, but before we dive in, here is my take on why this is a really important topic. Uh, while QuickBooks and manual processes such as spreadsheets offer good entry-level solutions, they have limitations that basically prevent the product from meeting the needs of many companies, especially growing companies such as yours and larger organizations as well. So if you've reached a point at which you've outgrown the performance and feature set offered by QuickBooks and other such point solutions and have to rely on manual processes such as spreadsheets, that's probably good news. And the reason I say that is because that means that your company is growing. And thousands of businesses arrive at similar crossroads every year. Some of the questions you may be asking could be, at what point do the cost of maintaining QuickBooks and manual processes outweigh the benefits of keeping them in place? When is the right time to make the move? And more importantly, no longer have to worry about lost data, performance problems, leaking information between sales, finance, and fulfillment systems, or struggling just to get the reports you need to run your business. For all this and more, we have two esteemed panelists who will share their experiences, the problems they faced, what motivated them to make the switch to NetSuite, the recommendations to you, and much more. So here is the agenda for today. I will provide a quick overview of the current trends in cloud computing and my take on QuickBooks, point solutions, and spreadsheets, and how they could be hampering your business growth. I will also discuss how we believe a cloud-based solution can help you replace these entry-level solutions with a more robust, reliable, and cost-effective solution, which will help you truly accelerate the growth of your business. After that, I'll kick off our panel discussion, during which we will talk about specific decisions that our panelists made about moving to NetSuite and how it has impacted their respective companies. We will also hear their advice to you and finally wrap up uh, the discussion with a Q&A during which you are welcome to ask questions of our panelists. And if you have questions during the presentation, please use the chat session, and we will address them during the Q&A session uh, towards the end of the discussion. And if we end up not getting to your question, we assure you that someone from NetSuite will revert back with a response soon. So let's get started. So here are our panelists uh, for the session today. Javi Friedman is the CFO of DC Dental, a distributor of dental products with offices in Maryland, New York, and Ohio. Javi joined DC Dental in 2007 and has since overseen annual revenue growth from 10 million in 20, 2007 to 45 million in 2013. The company has been named Inc. 500 company for the past three years, as well as a Future 50 award winner in 2013. Howie is very active in his company operations and was the project manager in company's transition to NetSuite ERP. Before joining DC Dental, Howie was with IRS as a revenue agent. He was awarded a CXO award winner by Smart CEO magazine and appears in their March 2011 edition. Howie is a CPA and has a Bachelor of Administration in Accounting from University of Maryland. Welcome, Howie. Dave Southwick is the Manager Tax and Accounting at Imagine Learning since 2010. He's Imagine's NetSuite company administrator and was in charge of convert, converting all of the financial data from QuickBooks to NetSuite. He's responsible for all company tax returns, financial statement audits, and ensuring the financial statements are in accordance with GAAP. Previously, Dave worked with two CPA firms. Dave also runs his own tax practice, providing tax and advisory services to about 125 clients. Dave is a CPA and has an MBA in accounting and bachelor's in finance and economics from Utah State University, where he was in the rugby team as well. Welcome, Dave. So here is a quick overview of who we are. NetSuite is the world's leading provider of cloud-based business management software. NetSuite helps companies manage your core business processes with single, fully integrated system covering ERP, financials, CRM, e-commerce, inventory, and much more. We serve over 16,000 companies and subsidiaries and are the fastest growing top 10 ERP system globally. We are publicly traded and our most recent qu quarterly revenue was a 34% year-over-year increase. 
As you can see, listed are some of the organizations that leverage the power of NetSuite's cloud-based ERP to run their businesses worldwide. And these organizations range from small to mid-sized businesses to large multinationals and their subsidiaries. Our efforts have been recognized in the market and by the industry by the various awards that are listed on your screen. So I would like to share some of the latest trends in cloud computing and their impact on businesses of all sizes. As you all can see, cloud momentum is accelerating. It's impossible to have a conversation these days without talking about cloud directly or indirectly. Whether it's movie rental, Netflix comes to mind, storing documents and sharing files, Box and Google Drive come to mind, music, uh, Apple iCloud is a good example, or a business solution, NetSuite and Salesforce are good examples. It's all about the cloud. In a tough economic environment and ever-changing expectations, business leaders such as yourself are required to deliver outcomes faster and cheaper with fewer resources. For businesses of all sizes, cloud represents a tremendous opportunity and is the de facto standard for doing business these days. Cloud is here to stay and represents an opportunity to change the way we do business. Here is another example of cloud adoption. Last year, the Cloud Accounting Institute conducted a national survey of finance and accounting professionals. The questions they basically asked related to their current and planned use of cloud solutions. And it's interesting to note that over 80% were favorable in their intention to use a cloud-based accounting solution in the future. The same study showed that cloud use increased a dramatic 44% from 2012 to 2013. Another interesting finding was that although on-premise and cloud solutions will coexist, the on-premise model has lost its dominance even in the novelty-resistant accounting field. Another interesting study, a research of over 1,700 IMA members identified the most critical challenges faced by accounting and finance teams today. Among the technology investments to improve productivity, the top three areas highlighted on your screens were integrating disparate systems, adding business intelligence, and replacing point solutions with a suite-based system, all problems that you can identify with. So having provided a bit of context in terms of the trends, the key question still remains, why can't we still do all this? Generally, investing in business software and automation was supposed to help and not be the obstacle. And from your perspective, it's difficult, if not impossible, to foresee the demands a growing business can place on your business software. And now suddenly, you're dealing with multiple systems that don't talk to each other. You have little or no visibility into your growing business with different versions of data. You cannot track mission-critical processes such as lead to cash, procure to pay, and IT costs are creeping up to integrate and maintain multiple solutions. So how did we get here? Normally, companies automate each business process on a per-need basis. They may start with QuickBooks for financials, act or gold mine for CRM, and export data to consolidate in Excel for reporting. And the idea is, after investing in technology, we should be able to run the business more efficiently and get needed insight to make decisions. And the result is just the opposite. The main reason for not able to get insight is due to automation. Organizations end up automating their business processes with best intentions, but few live up to expectations. What they provide instead is disruption. And talking about disruptions, despite best laid plans, companies end up with this. As the graphic shows, it grows into an application's hairball over time because most businesses are running multiple point systems for financial, sales, inventory, support, website, you name it. They are burdened with manual tasks and bottlenecks. So before we get into understanding how point solutions such as QuickBooks and manual processes such as spreadsheets could be hampering your business, here is a look at a few business processes such as order management, procurement, and services. And these are just three examples of numerous processes you may have at your respective organizations. And I'm sure that although not all these processes are exactly identical to what you may have at your companies, the one common factor is they're all complex. 
And running these on a bunch of spreadsheets, QuickBooks, or a hairball of solutions is not only highly inefficient, it's costly and unproductive. So here's a powerful example of the issue with manual systems such as spreadsheets. In the past few years, Excel has been implicated in some of the biggest blunders on Wall Street and finance in general. While you were reading the quote and looking at the Excel error message, a quick story on the impact of spreadsheet errors. In April of last year, a couple of UMass grad students announced that they discovered a simple spreadsheet error and highly questionable statistical procedures in what was considered to be the most influential economic analysis of recent years. They were referring to a 2010 paper by Harvard economists that made what many thought was an airtight case for government austerity. The study asserted that national economies with debt exceeding 90% of GDP don't grow. They shrank by an average of 0.1%. Their data gave austerity enthusiasts across the globe the green light to slash government spending even in the face of mass unemployment. But it was incorrect data, not only by leaving out information, but also simple spreadsheet errors. In fact, the UMass grad students claim that with correct spreadsheet calculations, GDP grows by an average of 2.2%, even with 90% debt levels. And the reason I'm giving this example is, as you all know, these kind of errors using manual processes happen quite frequently to all of us. So based on talking to our customers, here are some of the main reasons we see companies leave QuickBooks for a cloud-based solution such as NetSuite, to improve, ma to improve management reporting. QuickBooks was designed for a time when you could afford to wait until the end of the month to get the data you needed. That's not the case today. Consolidated views and up-to-the-minute real-time reporting can make the difference between thriving and barely surviving. Even the online and cloud versions of QuickBooks have significant limitations. You're doing most of your accounting outside of QuickBooks. For example, finance staff members are using several different applications to do their jobs. As a result, you find new finance systems, custom applications and spreadsheets springing around QuickBooks, filling the gaps that you'd expect your accounting system to take care of. You're losing sales because you cannot get information where and when it's needed fast enough. Customer service fails because agents don't have up-to-date information. Stock levels never seem to be where the customers want it. And customers and vendors are unable to self-serve information on the website. It's difficult to reconcile versions of data you have paper trails of sales orders, manual order entry and invoicing, financial consolidation takes ages, and sales forecasting and budgeting processes generally rely too much on guesswork. This is in addition to the lack of capabilities around real-time financial and operational consolidation, multi-currency, multi-tax, multinational intelligence, and lack of capabilities around the ability to customize the system to meet the needs of your specific company and your vertical. And last but certainly not the least, with each new layer of business software you add, the underlying systems become more inflexible. The investments in underlying hardware and software becomes costly to maintain and feel to keep, keep pace with technology innovation. So the reason you may want to consider a suite-based solution like NetSuite is because Business suites can streamline key business processes such as lead to cash and procure to pay and centralize key business information. You can basically improve business efficiency and enable overall business across different areas such as sales, finance, service, and fulfillment to do more with less. Even within the organization, everybody has access to the same data based on their role profiles, of course. And you can extend the model to include your customers, vendors, and partners as well. We will hear from our panelists shortly on how they've transitioned from uh, QuickBooks to NetSuite and have realized the benefits. Another big advantage that cloud-based system provides is enabling your employees if they want to work from the office while traveling from home and a device of their choice. Since it's a 100% web-based solution, all they need is a browser. But before we move on to our panel discussion, here is a list of NetSuite customers who have migrated from QuickBooks. 
This is just a sample, and we have thousands of organizations at all verticals who have switched. So here are our panelists back again, and they will now share their experiences with everyone. But before that, I would request uh, Howie to provide a brief, brief overview of DC Dental. Howie? Yes, hi everyone. Uh, DC Dental is a, a distributor of dental supplies uh, nationwide. We have about 8,000 customers, 100 employees. And um, in 2013, we did about $43 million in revenue. Um, and uh, I guess some other characteristics would be we ship out seven or 800 packages a day, processing 400 orders. Um, and that uh, we continue to grow and we continue to utilize NetSuite in a way which, um, which helps us grow and, and doesn't get in the way and we don't ever use ERP as, as an excuse to why we can't do something. Hello? Uh, Dave, could you provide an overview of Imagine Learning, please? Oh, yes. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Imagine Learning, you know, we do educational software that we sell to public schools and school districts. Um, our company started in 2004. And so, I mean, basically from 2010 to 2013, we just had massive growth. Um, when I started with the company in 2010, you know, we were just doing $60 million in revenue. And this past year for 2013, we finished with $46 million in revenue, so some rapid growth. Plus, our employees have grown from 80 employees from 2010 to 250. Um, and to be able to facilitate that growth, we really needed you know, something besides QuickBooks to be able to help us manage that growth. So. Thanks, Dave. So moving on to the Q&A, the panel session, basically. Uh, question to you, Javi, basically. So what were the key challenges you were facing with QuickBooks? Uh, the number one challenge was, I would say the two biggest challenges was we had reached a user limitation. There's a 30 user limitation on QuickBooks Enterprise. So that was a hard stop we had to deal with. Um, we had uh, temporarily eased that by um, creating a second QuickBooks file, even though it was for the same tax ID and entity, um, but was a separate department. So we were able to manage um, the same company using two QuickBooks files, but ultimately we knew that we had to go to a, a mid-market ERP system that had um, uh, the capability of handling much more than 30 users. In addition, um, our, our QuickBooks company file, and it's been a couple of years since we've been on QuickBooks, but um, if I recall correctly, it had reached three gigabytes. Um, and when we called customer service and we had issues, they were telling us that the recommended file size should never exceed one gigabyte. And we were going back and forth um, trying to optimize our QuickBooks and coming up with different ways to do it. But we were never able to properly shrink our QuickBooks file. And it created a lot of issues. It was freezing a lot. It was, um, it was um, crashing. So th that was the primary reason. But in addition, I'm, I mean, the functionality that QuickBooks comes with was great when we started the company in 2002. But um, at the point where we were, when we were researching other options, we needed uh, a lot more functionality, user controls, um, integration with third-party platforms, and, and, uh, and just basic customizations to handle you know, our business workflow. So, those are all the different things that went into our decision that we had to leave QuickBooks. It wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. Yeah, and, and then on my end, um, I mean, our main reason for switching was revenue recognition. Um, and I'm not sure how many people out there, you know, are in software, but the uh, you know rev revenue recognition rules get pretty complex. Um, and you can't do that with QuickBooks. Um, we were basically using spreadsheets that were just getting too massive and especially when you're selling software licenses, you can only, you know, over a certain period of time, like we'll sell one-year licenses, but we can only recognize one-twelfth of that each month. And so doing that in a spreadsheet was um, was just getting getting too big. 
um, to be able to do that in NetSuite was very beneficial uh, for us. Um, and then also uh, reporting purposes um, for us to be able to customize reports in you know a bunch of different ways that we weren't able to do it in QuickBooks. Um, and then uh, and then we use, we also use NetSuite for a bunch of different things uh, that kind of flow into it. I guess first of all we use NetSuite Payroll. Um, we wanted to have our goal is to basically get everything we possibly can into NetSuite, so we're not um, re-entering in um, things in in different spreadsheets. For example, our human resource manager had five spreadsheets that she was trying to keep track of employees of where they were, um, their addresses, and now that we have it all in NetSuite, um, that's highly beneficial and saves them a bunch of time. Um, we also use an ex expense reporting program that flows directly into NetSuite um, that that saves us a bunch of time as well. So ultimately, you know, the the key issues on reasons why we changed uh, from QuickBooks to NetSuite were um, were for revenue recognition and to um, to I guess make things more simple um, and not have to different places. Thanks, Dave. Uh, moving on to the next question, I'll be back to you. So a three-part question. Why did you decide to go with a cloud-based approach? Why a suite? And what were some of the key criteria in evaluation? So I mean, at the time we were, we were looking into solutions, we didn't have a very strong IT infrastructure. Um, the server that we had that was running um, QuickBooks was constantly giving us problems, and it wouldn't have been adequate for any on-premise solution anyway. So if we were going to replace our ERP, we had to make a decision whether we were going to invest in premise-based uh, hardware infrastructure and possibly even human resources because we would have to have somebody on site to manage it. Or we could simply um, go to the cloud where the, the whole server end of things is managed by somebody else. It, to us, it was a, a no-brainer to do that, and the only question was why not cloud, and, and we had to kind of understand what the potential drawbacks were to going to a cloud-based solution. And um, when we looked at NetSuite, and, and, and you know, security is, is always something, uh, up, uptime is, is, is a concern. When you go to the cloud, you have to make sure that you can 100% trust. It's great to know that you, that you don't have to manage it, but sometimes if something keeps breaking, you wish you were in charge of managing it. And with NetSuite, um, our research had shown, and now our history has shown, that they're always up anyway. And to the extent that there are ever any issues, their experts are going to be better than any experts that we would have. So going to the cloud was a no-brainer. And, and the whole suite con concept, the concept of having an all-in-one package where um, it's a question of what you want to turn on and turn off, but you, everything could live within NetSuite is something that, that appeals to us. And um, and uh, David had, had talked about uh, uh, with, uh, with regard to human resources and payroll that the idea of having everything in one platform, uh, it makes managing the, your data so much easier. Dual entry is eliminated. Um, user interfaces are all alike. So if you have one user who's you know, doing three or four different functions, if they're all within NetSuite, then they all, they all, the training is that you don't need to retrain them on how to access and use a new system, log in, and all of that management that comes by having disjointed platforms and, and being able to have one, one continuous platform was very appealing to us. I mean, the most, um, the, the, the farthest we've stretched that is, is now we even run our, our WMS, our warehouse management system, is being run entirely within NetSuite. Um, and there is no third-party platform running a WMS, which I'm not sure that any other um, ERP system out there has something like that. Um, and, and that kind of was, was um, most of what our, our evaluation criteria was. I would add, if, you, if we're talking about evaluation criteria in an ERP system, the thing that, that made NetSuite stand out from all the others was it, the, most of the popular choices that are out there, Great Plains and Mass90 and, and all the, on all the um, legacy software systems that are out there, uh, we, we found that all of them had this dated feel to it. They, they, they seem to have been written in the 80s. I think they actually were written in the 80s. But they seem to have been written in the 80s. And we're a re relatively young company. We wanted something that was new and refreshing, that had a modern look and feel to it, both in the front end and the back end, the way the, the, way the, the data flowed through the system. 
And, um, and that was, you know, because we were on QuickBooks and we liked the fact that we, we liked the way certain things worked in QuickBooks and how easy it was to use. Um, I think, you know, NetSuite, I don't know if they were copying QuickBooks, but they certainly used a lot of similar types of uh, interface rules where it was very easy for us to use. It was, very, it was a very smooth transition. So all of those things played into, the, uh, into our decision to ultimately choose NetSuite. Are we yeah. uh, staying with you? Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. one quick thing. So you said you yeah. mentioned in our earlier conversation that you, you evaluated 30 different options and narrowed down to NetSuite mm -hmm. and Great Plains, and you talked about. Don't make me list all 30. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not. I don't remember. Time, anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. So you talked about you know Great Plains not being a cloud-based solution and significant upfront costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Great Plains was the the, the runner-up. I mean that was going to be our, that was, I mean, we had gone very deep into, into Great Plains. Um, and um, the, the upfront costs were, were, were enormous. I mean, they, you can, they, they, have, they have the answers if you go to them, you know, because they, they're familiar with NetSuite. They know it's out there. So they'll say about how you can finance it or lease it and how they can put it on the cloud or host it for you. But those are ways where they're, trying to make them look and sound and feel like NetSuite and like a cloud-based solution. But the reality is that um, when you sign with Great Plains, you are signing away a half a million dollars. Or uh, If you're a smaller company, you can get away with probably two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars um, that you're going to owe one, at one point or another. You can't get that money back. And you're also um, not going to be in a true cloud-based solution where it, it's I mean, to me, a full cloud software as a service solution is something where you go to any web browser and you go on and, and it acts like, like any other website um, except that it's, it's your ERP system. So um, that, th those two things were what made and, – and, and, and like I said before, Great Plains is, is – they, they update it a lot, but it, it, the core, the core um, of it is, is a dated type of software. It's not it, – it's, it, it didn't have some of the, the functionality that NetSuite brought to the table to using some of the more modern ideas. Reporting is a big one, and the fact that they integrated reporting into NetSuite was something which really appealed to us. The, the, the ability to basically pull out any information from NetSuite, and not just you know, your IT professional or your senior level accountant, but anybody in the company really has an ability to pull out whatever information we allow them to pull out uh, ad hoc, you know, they could build reports on their own, and 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 it 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 far exceeds what what QuickBooks can do, but it does it in a way where it's 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 even easier than the reporting capabilities within QuickBooks. Thank you, Howie and uh, Dave. The same question to you: Why cloud? Why suite? And what were some of your key evaluation criteria? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I like using the cloud for, you know, almost anything I can uh, nowadays to be able to have everything out um, for our accounting is beneficial because you can access it from anywhere, from any computer, from any device. Um, I mean, we we previously used QuickBooks Online, which was nice, you know, could that be in kind of cloud-based, but the functionality in it wasn't wasn't I didn't think was quite as good as you know basically the desktop version, um, but you know but that was that was key um, to to be able to use using this cloud based system. Um, we we always like to use uh, technology to to our benefit. Um, Netsuite we've never had I think over the period of time we've had downtime of of maybe an hour in the four years we've used it. Which has been great because you know we don't have to go and be like, oh, we're not going to have access to our financial information for a day, um, which I experienced with QuickBooks. Um, the transformation wasn't too difficult to switch from QuickBooks to NetSuite. I mean, it took took a couple months to input data, um, but ultimately it became beneficial. Um, let's see, you know, why a suite-based approach? Um, you know, we ultimately just wanted to have everything in one place. You know, we looked at you know different different payroll providers, and ultimately, to be able to have NetSuite payroll was was just a key factor, all in one place. Um, and some key evaluation criteria criteria. Um, I mean, number one was revenue recognition, um, and then we ultimately wanted a web-based 
solution for our accounting system, CRM and ERP. Um, so yeah, I mean, ultimately it's been uh, been a great uh, change for us to switch from QuickBooks to NetSuite. And, and Dave, uh, staying with you again, I mean, in your previous conversation, uh, you, you'd mentioned about the ease of adding users, uh, you know, to NetSuite versus QuickBooks. Yes. Um, so, I mean, anytime, I mean, with a fast-growing company, I mean, you know, as we said previously, we had um, 80 employees when, when we started in 2010 when we made the switch, you know, now with 250 employees. Uh, most of our employees have, in, in, have a, a NetSuite license to be able to either enter in, you know, an invoice um, to track their customers, um, to be able to access dashboards. Um, people are able to submit expense reports or POs. Uh, through NetSuite, you know, that can go, that can be approved by their manager. Um, we also like the controls that we've been able to put in place um, in NetSuite. For example, you know, if somebody enters in a journal entry, we, you know, I can't approve my own journal entry. We have to have, um, like, the CFO has to approve a journal entry, or somebody below me, when they prepare a journal entry, I have to approve it um, before it can get posted. So, I mean, there are certain controls that you can put in place. Um, each person, you know, can have different access to different things, different reports. It's easy to easy to change, easy to add a different role to, to a person that needs to be able to access um, certain reports or, or uh, certain searches. Um, so that was, that's been highly beneficial and is, is very easy to do. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Javi, back to you. So, what were some of your experiences in making the move? Um, well, one of the things that um, at, at least three years ago, I'm not sure how much the landscape has changed since then, but uh, one of the things we had looked for, and this is just uh, advice no matter what platform you switch to, but it, I think this is particular <laughs> advice if someone is going to switch to NetSuite. Um, is that you want to you want to find uh, this is and again my personal preference I have no idea what NetSuite recommends <laughs> but this is what I recommend as a NetSuite user is is to find a a um, a, a suitable partner somebody who who uh, you know a small uh, you know someone a smaller type of business or whatever somebody who who's an expert in NetSuite who can really take on the project of helping you migrate your data properly make sure to do all the checks and balances. Uh, before you you know you go live so that uh, all your your problems are anticipated and and then being on site if if possible during the go live um, during the go live uh, period to make sure that things are going smoothly plug in any holes or anything that you that you may have missed in your planning and and helping ensure that that it goes as smoothly in our particular uh, experience we we did just that we found a partner to, to use. They were able to, uh, they, uh, you know, unfortunately, where they weren't in, Mar they weren't located in Maryland, so they weren't on site um, on a daily basis. But the day with the, the uh, they came on site several times before we went live, and then on go live, they stayed, they stuck around for about a week or two, and helped transition each and every one of our users, uh, and and solve any, any one of the problems that we had. So overall, our transmit, our, our transition was. Um, was fairly smooth, and um, for you know any ERP uh, implementation is, is always is always considered to be painful. I think ours was the least painful it could have possibly been, um, and most of that was due to our, to, uh, to our planning, but also um, you know NetSuite was able to uh, the, the software was able to accommodate any last minute changes that we need pretty easily. So. And uh, just to add to your well. point, basically, Howie, I mean, we have on our website and for the attendees a list of very impressive integrators and partners who will help mm -hmm. you with the implementation. So if you're interested, you can look it up, including NetSuite Professional Services as well. So Dave, uh, back to you with the same questions. What were some of your experiences uh, making the move? All right. So we made the move. Um, in the middle of the year. So we, basically we what we did is we started, um, we wanted to be fully converted over and just using NetSuite on July 1st. Um, so what we did to, to start off was we ran three months parallel QuickBooks with NetSuite. So from April, May, and June, 
basically did double entry just to make sure that everything was working properly in both places or in NetSuite and just making sure, you know, everything matched up correctly. Um, and then once we, I mean, the biggest, the part that took the longest time was doing the revenue recognition and basically inputting all of our invoices that we'd had basically been following in Excel, putting those all in and setting up the revenue recognition schedules, setting up the dates, um, and just making sure the, the revenue recognition showed up properly um, in in that suite. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, it, it ended up being being smooth and ended up being uh, greatly beneficial in the end. Thank you, Dave. So now that you've been running in the cloud, mm -hmm. Howie, what's been the improvement to your financial processes, and also if you can share some of the benefits to the broader organizations? Um, so to the financial um, the financial process, I, I mean, it, 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 you can't really compare. Our, our ability to uh, – the user controls um, enabled us to have much greater uh, confidence in what we were seeing and what was coming through and, and, and making sure that whatever got posted and whatever was, was, was posted to our financials was accurate. We set up – NetSuite has this, uh, the ability to, do, uh, to, for, to, to create alerts, email alerts, that go out to all the uh, appropriate parties as a basic level. Just email me when this happens or that happens. If anything is anything, any invoices are put in over a certain amount of money. Anything is shipped overseas. I mean, you can you can, you can pretty much do anything and create an alert that emails anybody within the company, and it could be a, a dynamic alert. So it alerts the, the user, or alerts the user's manager. So just using alerts has improved uh, our our. our, um, our our, our processes in terms of, of financial reporting, um, and then um, and, and it gave us greater it gave gave us greater confidence in what information was going in and what information was going out, and our ability to pull out information has also greatly improved as we talked about with the, with the, the advanced reporting. Um, overall, as a, a broad organization, it's 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 uh, it's heads and shoulders uh, um, better. I mean, every part of our company is better. From switching to NetSuite and switching to cloud-based software, we have users all over the world um, in, in, in multiple countries. We have six different offices, and everything that goes on within the organization is, is set up. And the way we set up NetSuite was, was not the way NetSuite wants it to be set up, and then how can we switch our company processes to match that. But the reverse, where we basically dictate to NetSuite or – and not – <laughs> to our IT staff and our operations staff, and we dictate exactly how things need to work, and then we're able to make that accommodation within the software and within the cloud-based platform. And how you talked about how you know it saved you a significant you know amount of time personally, uh, just in generating reports and being at a CFO level. I'm assuming that adds like significant value that you can you know devote your time to other strategic activities. Absolutely. I mean, um, first of all, delegating tasks become easier because I can delegate a task and know that with the restrictions that are put in and with uh, the simplicity of, of me, I could set it up in a way where I know that whoever I've delegated to is done properly. I could import um, pretty much any information I need to import as opposed to having to do it manually when we need to do corrections or, or something on, on, on a mass amount of data or import additional data. It's done in, in seconds rather than hours. Um, we do um, probably 50 imports a day. You know, from from our purchase orders, just just purchase orders alone, we we submit uh, um, hundreds of lines of, of purchase orders a week. It was a person's full-time job. I think maybe even two people uh, in QuickBooks entering in purchase orders, and now it, it's. It's a spreadsheet that comes uh, out of out of out of NetSuite. We we have a replenishment order, and it gets imported in a CSV file in in about 10 minutes, and we can create about 100 purchase orders that automatically shoot out to all of our vendors. And if our vendors did accept uh, did did have an EDI format, it would actually go off to them in electronically. Um, so, and that's just one example. There's hundreds of examples of processes that are. Are, are taken from 
40 hours a week to one hour a week. So you could theoretically, if you find 40 of those processes, cut out 40 employees with one, uh, and just teach, you know, teach them how to, how to do imports and, and some other mass updates. Fantastic. Uh, Dave, the same question to you. Basically, what's been the improvement in your financial processes and the broader organization? Yeah, I mean, the, the key thing is, has been reporting. Um, the fact that we're able to just just basically enter, go into NetSuite and find the report and pull it up, you know, set the dates, and, you know, we can send it off to management is, is very important. Um, I mean, some things that we've had, we've customized ourselves. So, I mean, in NetSuite, we keep track of our financial statements in accordance with GAAP. However, we're able to customize things, so sometimes GAAP financial statements aren't very useful for management and making decisions. Um, so we've created like a, a GAAP, we have our GAAP income statement, we have our non-GAAP income statement um, that's more useful for management. Um, and, you know, I agree with Howie, especially with being able to import um, certain things. I mean, I import journal entries um, all the time with department that can, with department classifications um, and if I were to put those in manually, I mean, it could take it could take an hour to put in a journal entry. But the fact that I can just do, you know, import a CSV file um, has has can save significant time. Um, and I guess to go along with that, being able to do departmental uh, reporting um, to each of our managers of, you know, the human resource manager, our support manager, um, you know, our CFO, uh, marketing. Uh, to be able to kind of classify every transaction according to departments has been very beneficial for reporting purposes um, among all of our departments. Um, and then, you know, month end close, you know, I just have a whole list of memorized transactions that I'm able to just go and click click on each month, you know, record. Um, it goes to goes to the CFO, you know, he approves of the journal entries and they get posted. Um, so to be able to do that just saved a significant time, especially with our month end close process and with our reporting. Thank you, Dave. And um, how are you back to you, basically? So in terms of best practices, what would be your advice to, you know, somebody looking to make the move? Um, it would be uh, uh, similar to my implementation best practices. I would say, um, uh, well, the selection criteria, assuming uh, we could start with the selection criteria, but, you know, assuming that, You've selected NetSuite, and you're like, okay, well, what's the next step? I would, I would personally advise um, finding a uh, a contact, somebody who, and it could be, I guess, that would you could you could also look into NetSuite Professional Solutions or any independent contact uh, or company that specializes in NetSuite. Evaluate their expertise, get a comfort level with them, including possibly um, having them give you some customer referrals for you to speak to. And, and then working with them to, to strategize the, 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 the move and making sure that it's done the, in a way that best matches, your, best matches your business processes and objectives. Um, a lot of times an implementation is an opportunity to do things a little differently than you've been doing them before. And if you have the right person that you're working with and the right advisors that you're speaking to, you can really set up NetSuite to not only replace your current ERP system, but also enhance your overall company and make your, your company a stronger company. Dave, uh, same question to you. The best practices, uh, what's your advice to anyone like, um, looking to make the move? Where should this start? Yeah, I'm, I mean, the thing is to have, have the right people in place, you know, when you are ready to, to switch over. Um, you know, if you have an experienced person, with QuickBooks, I mean, I didn't, when, ultimately, when we switched to NetSuite, I didn't know anything about NetSuite, and I was able to pick it up pretty quickly just with the experience with QuickBooks. Um, so, I mean, it, it is easy to, to learn, um, to learn and get, get acquainted with NetSuite. Um, I mean, ultimately, just, you know, be patient and just, you know, play around with the, the program and, and see how it works. Um, and then take advantage of any training uh, that NetSuite provides. Um, we've taken several several webinars um, with you know approved NetSuite providers or trainers, um, where we've done uh, done a two-day seminar on 
reporting to be able to customize our reports and customize our searches um, so that we don't have to basically we don't even have to export everything into an Excel spreadsheet and then analyze it from there. We can just you know set up searches, run calculations in NetSuite, and basically be able to pull up the report. Um, just by the one click instead of having to go and customize it out of out of NetSuite. Um, but so I, I just encourage anyone to take advantage of any training, any webinars um, that NetSuite does provide to enhance your experience because the more you, you know, the more um, the more things that you know that, that are in NetSuite, the more beneficial it will be for your company or your organization. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I see a lot of actually questions coming through, so and we have uh, just about I think 10 minutes left. So I'm going to skip through this my concluding slide and move directly to the Q&A. And one of the questions that is coming through basically, uh, and you talked about it both Harvey and Dave, is what are your experiences around security, availability, and performance of the system? Harvey, if you can take I'm sorry, that. Sorry, what was the question? I'm sorry, what are your experiences the around uh, security, uh, availability, and performance? Security, availability, and performance. Okay, we'll start with uh, security. Um, it, it needs to be done right, and you need to take the time to make sure you do it right. But the, the security controls can be set up in a way that will match your needs, in my experience, to match your needs. Sometimes it's more complicated than others, depending on how complex your security needs are. Obviously, to make it that a, that a sales rep, for example, can only see their customers is easy. To make it that they can see their customers and five other customers in the company that belong to other five other sales reps would be a little bit more challenging. But overall, the uh, the security needs that you have in terms of user, I guess I'm focusing on user controls, is there as far as um, you know other you know security concerns you may have? For example, the data being stored on someone else's server. I, I believe I personally can't speak to it nearly as well as, as someone from Netsuite can talk about it. But the research that I had done then was that any information that is put, it, if 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 you're anywhere near a small business, mid-sized business, or less than a billion dollar a year business, the security that you're going to be offered from a company as large as Netsuite is going to be better than any security that you're going to get from putting the data on your own servers. Uh, as far as availability goes, uh, we spoke about the uptime. I mean, um, it, it, Netsuite has gone down for probably five hours in the last three years, maybe ten hours in the last three years. I can guarantee you, if we were using something on site, it would have been more than that, probably within a week's period of time. But certainly in a three-year period of time, we would have been down for more than 10 hours. Um, it, 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 it is sometimes frustrating when it goes down and you can't you know, yell at the, the, your on-site IT person because it's someone else's fault. But you can always rest assured that when NetSuite goes down for you, it's down for thousands of other users, and they get it back up within minutes. So it's always available. Um, and there was a third uh, criteria set, availability, security. And what was the third one? Uh, performance. The performance. Um, performance is something that always needs to be measured uh, regularly uh, because you know it's, it's a it's a it's a double-edged sword because of the uh, the ease of customizing NetSuite and, and and putting in custom codes and scripts and and workflows into NetSuite. We have had situations where something that we wrote, some customization that we deployed, decreased performance, um, but we were able to fix it and. If, if not for mistakes that we've made, uh, the performance level of NetSuite is is, is very is very solid. Uh, but for 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 disclosure purposes, there is a latency that exists with any cloud-based software, whether you're using you know your email in the cloud versus using Outlook and 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 a desktop application. There's a latency that exists if you have a fast internet connection. It's very minor, but it is it is there. But other than that minor latency, which you learn to get used to, um, th there really isn't an, an, an issue in, in terms of performance. And, and our company file has grown significantly. I mean, we have you know 50,000 items and 75,000 customers, and all, all kinds of numbers that uh, in, an, in a QuickBooks environment w would have crippled our company. And, uh, you know, from NetSuite perspective, I would like to add to uh, what Harry mentioned, that we incorporate uh, the most stringent encryption standards 
the 128-bit uh, SSL encryption, basically what you do for your banking. And we also have role-based uh, that Hobby and uh, Dave both talked about, field-level uh, security and more. We also have met a host of security standards, you know, uh, too many to name SSA 16, PCI DSS, EU, US Safe Harbor, et cetera. And we do provide multiple levels of redundancy to ensure that you get continuous access to your data and replication and syncing of the data across different data centers uh, for disaster recovery as well. And we guarantee, uh, as Dave, uh, as Harvey was just mentioning, a 99.5% uptime, basically backed by a service level commitment. Okay, moving on to next question. So, um, Dave, to you, basically, what were some of the objections you faced, uh, or potentially, you know, whoever is going to be adopting could face uh, in moving to the cloud and? How, how can somebody overcome those objections? Um, I mean, I guess if you give an objection, is, is it maybe being slower than a desktop version of QuickBooks? Um, but I have not found that to be the case. Um, you know, one thing that I love to do in NetSuite is I end up having multiple tabs. I mean, I'll use Google Chrome for my, um, my browser. Um, but like any link you want to click on, you know, within NetSuite, you can right click and say open a new window. In QuickBooks, when I've used QuickBooks online, they don't have that feature. So you have to always click and then go back and kind of keep going back. Whereas NetSuite, you could have, you know, 10 different tabs opened up, you know, and, and be able to kind of just go between the, the several different tabs and being able to view that information. Um, and Let's see. Sorry, what um, what was the qu or what's the other part of the question? So, how did you overcome those objections? Basically, the buy-in from different stakeholders, and you know, you talked briefly about uh, you know uh, configuring NetSuite as well. But mm -hmm. basically, moving to cloud itself, you know, there are objections ac across there in organizations, and in your experience, how does one overcome those objections? Yeah, um, I mean, ultimately, you got to convince convince everybody within your company that it's, it's going to be beneficial for them in the long run. I know some people had objections because they were comfortable with all their spreadsheets and felt like they had them you know, as, as good as possible. Um, so ultimately, after being able to switch over to NetSuite and kind of running parallel for a while between you know being able to compare their spreadsheets with NetSuite, um, ultimately I was able to convince them to get rid of their spreadsheets and say, hey, look, everything we have on your spreadsheet is in NetSuite. You don't need to enter everything onto your spreadsheet as well as it going into NetSuite. I mean, here's the report. Everything matches. Let's get rid of your spreadsheet and then save you time from from double entering anything in twice. Uh, Dave, staying with you, basically another question that is coming up is: Is it difficult to map QB accounts slash transactions into NetSuite? It seems like migrating years of transactions would be tough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what what we did is basically we just did a journal entry for for uh, a couple years, each monthly, for I think three years before we actually started using NetSuite. So, um, so I think 2009 we just started doing, you know, made a journal entry every month that we put in NetSuite so that our transaction was, or not our transactions, but we could see our financial data. Um, but then ultimately when we switched over, um, all we did is is basically start, okay, March or sorry, April first, uh, we're gonna start having in all our, having all of our transactions, we're gonna be doing our bank reconciliations, we're gonna be tracking our accounts receivable, accounts payable. Um, and so by um, by by putting that in we didn't didn't go back and input everything that we'd ever put in QuickBooks. Does that answer the question? Thank you, Dave. Uh, Howie, do you have a different take, or is it the same? No, I mean, we imported one year of history. Um, it, it was challenging to, to import our history. We were able to, and, and not all our history, we were mostly focused on sales history, um, so that we would be able to get uh, a feel for customers' order, um, order history. And not only that, but our replenishment is built on order history. So in order for us to replenish inventory, we needed to have 
a comparable data going back three, six, nine, twelve months on products to see what we sold and what we didn't sell. So that was as far as historical transactions, what we had migrated. Um, for the most part, everything else was just making sure that our AR, AP, and inventory balances and other, um, well, those three were the big big ones, make sure that they matched up. So we had to import all our uh, invoices, um, open invoices and open um, bills, payables, and, and as well as all our inventory items so that it matched exactly the information that was in QuickBooks. And we were able to do it over a weekend. Um, and then that was it. So a year of sales history. Um, open balances, and then the rest of our balance sheet um, was an and income statement for the year was journal entries. Thank you, Holly. Really interesting question coming up. So it says, if I gave you the funding and sent you back in time, would you have chosen NetSuite over QuickBooks to start with? Holly, uh, if you can take uh, that. Uh, well, <laughs> I could take that question. Um, well, when we started with QuickBooks, it was in um, 2002. The owner of the company was 21 years old and was working out of a garage. Probably um, we would have used QuickBooks um, at that time, um, but that's because migrating to NetSuite when we needed to was, uh, was, was, was pretty painless. Would we have migrated earlier? Yes, we wouldn't have waited until 2011. We probably would have done it in 2008, 2009, when we actually had uh, a company. Um, but, uh, you know, when we started with QuickBooks from nothing. And, and, and when you're starting a company from, from scratch um, and you have no money, uh, it, it's, I would say start with QuickBooks and then figure out when you grow when, when it is an appropriate time to switch. So it would be a, kind of a dream if somebody would just give you some cash. <laughs> wouldn't it be wouldn't it be everyone's dream? <laughs> uh Dave, same question to you. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with Howie on on that. Um I mean especially when you're a small company, QuickBooks is a lot as long as you know what you're doing with QuickBooks, then QuickBooks can can work well, you know, being a really small company. But once you get in that phase where you're like, Okay, we want to take this to the next level, um mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, make the jump, you know, kind of as soon as you can, as soon as you have funding, because, I mean, the, the more information you have in there, you know, it's easier to start from the beginning instead of, you know, kind of converting in the middle. But I mean, ultimately, it's 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 possible and it's not too difficult. But the more information, everything that you have in Netsuite, um, I think it just makes it smoother and and to be able to have all that history in there, especially if you plan on using Netsuite for you know, many, 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 many years, um, just the more information you have in there, the better it will be. It would have been nice. Yeah, I mean, I could just add a little bit more to that. I mean, um, when I say the cost of NetSuite is higher, it's not necessarily the software cost, so that may or may not be true. But, you know, there, there's no perfect way to mix uh, hundreds and thousands of additional functionalities um, and then keep it just as simple as QuickBooks. The, the average small business owner, and this is the case in our company when it was started, the person who started the company had very, very little accounting background, well, no accounting background, I should say, and, 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 and very little business experience. So, and that could be, that, that's probably the story behind many of the small businesses that start in this country. So for someone like that, you want to be able to you know, go to Staples and buy a $99 piece of software and start using it. Um, <laughs> So that, that's that's our story, and it could be a lot of other companies' stories. And and to to use to switch over to Net, yeah, in hindsight, if you would have been a smarter person back then with a little bit more knowledge, you would have chosen Netsuite. Um, but that you know that 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 would be uh, that's wishful thinking. Most companies don't start with that sort of forth, uh, uh, foresight. Thank you, Holly. And I think uh, I can see that we are at the top of the hour, and I apologize that we couldn't get to all of the questions. And I assure you that uh, somebody from NetSuite uh, or even Howie and uh, Dave uh, will return back with a response soon. And um, I wanted to thank everybody um, who took the time to attend the webinar today, and I hope uh, this answered some of your questions about cloud and issues relating to QuickBooks and point solutions as your organizations grow. I also wanted to thank our panelists, Harvey Friedman, CFO of DC Dental, and Dave Southwick, uh, Manager of Tax and Accounting at Imagine Learning, for sharing their experiences and providing valuable insights. 
Uh, thanks, everybody, and have a great day.